Hello everyone. Today's video we are going to make a rhinestone canvas piece of art. All right, so I found this three pack of uh, skinny thin uh, canvas boards at Michael's. It is the Artist Loft brand. It came in a three pack. And so my niece is actually graduating college and she will be moving uh, to New York. So when I saw this design on the Rhinestone World's website, I knew that this was something that I wanted to make my niece as a gift. And what is that? It is... It's a big apple with the New York City skyline within the apple. So I thought this would be a great little going away gift. And so we're going to go ahead and make this. It is three layers. Um, so you have the red for the apple. You have black for the city line and the top of the apple. And then you have these little pieces right here <coughs> that are meant to be the shine of the top of the apple. So, um, now one thing is, okay, so I got this uh, template from the Rhinestone World, which is mostly where I get my designs. Of course, the Rhinestone template is also from the Rhinestone World. Um, when I bought this design, when you buy a layered design, once you cut them out, they are supposed to be and are, I should say, they are the same size. So then when you're layering the different colors, um, you could just lay this right on top after you pick up your red rhinestones and I'll show you how to do all of that. You lay the template on top and then so it's gonna pick up the rhinestones exactly where it needs to be. So when you finally press it, you have this lined up with your second set of rhinestones, right? However, when I cut the third template, all the sizes I confirmed were all the same size in my design space. However, this one, even though this was sized to be the same as these two, design space decided to cut this at a different size. So if you can see right here, if I line the left side up of my template, you'll see that the right side is much larger. Um, and that's not how these templates are usually made. They're usually made to be the exact same width so you can layer them. And so when you pick up your different colored rhinestones, everything falls into place accordingly. When I went back into my design space, all the templates are exactly the same width. So we're going to go ahead and press this rhinestone um, art onto this canvas this canvas board and so you could either put this in a frame you could mat it and put it in a frame without the glass you can actually see the sparkle of the uh, diamond cut rhinestones or you could just get a little easel and set this on top of the easel and put it on the tabletop or desk or whatever so let's go ahead and get started we're gonna start with the red apple so I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off um so we're going to brush in the red rhinestones first. I had a little mishap at first, um, and I mixed my red and black rhinestones. So I spent a little bit of time trying to separate them. So now we're just going to start all over again. But you would never know that because that's not recorded. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and brush in the red rhinestones. Let me make sure this is a little more straight. Um, it's really not going to matter because once I put the hot fix tape on my table, I'm going to create a hinge so it's going to be permanently there. So when I do the layering, um, I'm just going to focus on making sure that my corners line up. When we get to this template, which is a little larger, um, that's just going to, I might have to do that off camera because that might be a little too long to kind of figure out. I've already made one of these already. Um, but I thought this would be a great project to share, uh, with regards to creating, uh, a piece of artwork on this flat canvas board here. So it's going to look really, really cool. So let's go ahead and brush in the red rhinestones. 
Some people are much better at brushing in rhinestones. There might be one or two black ones in there, which I could just pull out uh, with my Crystal Katana uh, wax pen here. So let's go ahead and get this started. Some people could just brush this in in like one big stroke. And I'm like, how do they do that? It takes me a little bit of time. See, there's a black rhinestone right there. There's another one over there. But this is a great opportunity for me to pull those out. Um, so I don't know how some people just brush this in like two or one or two swipes and all the holes are filled in. I don't have that much luck with that. And then sometimes I feel like I'm pulling out the rhinestones once they're, they're in there. So I'm going to go ahead and with my pen, my wax pen, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the black ones and replace any of the holes that need rhinestones. So I'm going to do that off camera so I don't spend too much time uh, filling this in here. But you get the, the idea. All right. All right, so I have my diamond cut strawberry rhinestones placed on the template. We're going to go ahead and pick up these rhinestones. All right, I'm going to create a hinge. I just need to make sure that I create a hinge over here. And then we're going to go ahead and lay this down and pull tight. And then we're going to pick up these rhinestones. All right, I might have zoomed in a little too much. Let me see if my lighting here makes a difference. I turned on my, my Bright 360 there. I did a video for my Bright 360, kind of a review of what I thought. And then when I went to go edit it, I noticed that the editing program that I had, they've revised it so much, they've taken features away and then added it to a new package. So the features that I was using before, now I have to make pay more money for <laughs> to use. It's just so goofy. So I'm looking for a new editing software that's user-friendly. So let's see, here's my light too bright here. I know I'm not quite in the center here, but I need a little bit of space. All right, so again, this template should fit right on top of this apple, nice and even all the way around. So then this one is going to be the black rhinestones. Okay, that could have been a disaster. All right, disaster diverted. We're gonna go ahead and lay this down and this should lay down nice and even and then you will not see any of the other that's not laying evenly. I wanna get it as, as close to perfect as possible. I could be here all day trying to do this, so I might have to finish this off when I turn off the recording button here. It never fails. As soon as I turn off the record button, I drop it down perfectly. So at any rate, we're going to go ahead and pour in the black rhinestones. And I'm going to press this with my Cricut Easy Press. Um, I found that pressing, oh, and I hope my cat doesn't jump up here. Um, I found that if I use a clamshell, my clamshell uh, heat press with rhinestones, the rhinestones tend to shift. Um, so I'm going to press it going from above. And I know that the new Cricut uh, press does have that capability from pressing from the top. However, it's quite a pricey heat press, so I did not get that. Um, so I'm going to use my, my Cricut Easy Press 
and then come from above to press the rhinestones. All right. And so we just need to fill in a couple more. And I'll go ahead and do that with my wax pen. Sometimes the more I spread these rhinestones around, the more I pull them out or pop them out myself. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the blanks. Okay, so the black rhinestones are all brushed in. So since we've created the hinge over here on the table, uh oh, here comes my cat. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pull this nice and tight and then line up the black rhinestones come on bully okay so now I've pressed in all the black rhinestones and so now we're gonna go ahead and lift this off make sure to pick up all your rhinestones And then we're going to tape this down to the table so that doesn't lift. And now we do want to remove this template. You don't want it too bulky. And so now we're going to go ahead and play around with this one. And I'm so confused as to why this one even cut the way it did. So I kind of got to... What I could do is slice it down the center. Um, I just need to make sure that I don't see any of the other holes. That one is good there. This is quite frustrating. Not sure why this template cut out this way. So now we have this little bubble right there in the center, which is kind of annoying. Um, but this should fit nicely once it is picked up. It'll fit nice and even. See, if I lay it flat, you can see right there, you can see the holes behind it. Um, so I'm just gonna, you can't see any of the holes there or there. That's actually kind of annoying, so I'm not quite sure, once again, because all my measurements are exactly the same um, for the width of the templates. And I've never had a problem cutting any of my layered rhinestone templates in Design Space. This is the first time that's happened where this is not the same width, even though the measurement shows that it is. So we're gonna go ahead and pour in the clear rhinestones. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in those and then we'll pick up this section. All right, so those are ready. So we're gonna go ahead and peel this over and pick up those rhinestones. All right, so I picked them up. So now we have all the different colors ready to go onto the apple here. So I'm gonna remove this from my table. Maybe I should attempt cutting this one again. I just don't want to waste any of the template. I need to pick up those rhinestones off the table too before my cat makes her way over here. All right. And let's take a look at the apple. How pretty is that? All right, so one thing that you definitely wanna do is you wanna make sure that all your rhinestones have a glue backing on the back. Um, you also wanna make sure that none of them are touching sometimes. When, if I'm doing t-shirts and I have this laid out on top of the t-shirt accordingly, um, you can actually shift some of the rhinestones, like these right here are shifting, so I might move a couple of the red ones right over with some tweezers. Same thing with the white part up here. I'm just gonna scooch some of those around a little bit, um, and then we'll go ahead and press this down onto the canvas board 
with the Cricut Easy Press. Bully. Hi. Are you good? You want to sit up there? You good? All right, guys. So I have my uh, apple ready to press. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my my pad here for my easy press and I've double checked to make sure that all my rhinestones have glue on the backing sometimes you'll know that it doesn't have glue when you see a little bit of silver I do see a little bit of silver on that one so I'm going to change out that rhinestone because I want to make sure it doesn't fall off my canvas all right, so the rhinestone has been replaced. Um, so it does have complete glue on all the rhinestones for the backing. And so let me see which canvas is better of the two. Um, they all kind of have a little bit of flaws on them. Mm, I'm gonna go with this one. All right, so we have our canvas ready. I'm going to go ahead and lay my apple down and find a good spot for it. Just want to make sure it looks kind of even and then my cityscape right here is even from the bottom. So I'm going to take my T-square. And I'm just going to measure, I want to see where my line is at, so it is crooked. All right, so it looks like I do have my apple um, right where I want it. Uh, I just want to shift it to the right a little bit. All right, so I, I have it in the perfect spot that I want it. Um, it looks a little wonky only because my hot fix tape is cut wonky. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this with my Cricut Easy Press. All right. And the last time I did this, I had to do it three times just to make sure um, that it was nice and uh, the rhinestones were fixed to the canvas. So I have the temperature set at 320. And this is about to go off. I'm going to let it cool for a second. But if I were to lift this, I don't believe it's stuck on there just yet. You see some rhinestones are already still lifting. Um, this is the same case that I had the last time I made this. Um, and some of my rhinestones look like they might have shifted a little bit. And again, because they are three-dimensional, I want to make sure... Okay, so that one is still... kind of want to push it back into its spot there. So I do have to press this about three times just to get the hot thick stones to stick to this board. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera and then I will reveal what the apple looks like finished. All right, everyone. So I've pressed it about four times. I did use my um, Teflon sheet just to heat it up a little more. Um, so let's go ahead and peel this off. The last time I did it, I did about four presses as well. Okay, I don't see any rhinestones lifting. Fabulous! All right, so here is the Big Apple on a canvas board. These are diamond cut rhinestones from the rhinestone world. And so that's what that looks like. So now you have a piece of art. You could either frame it and mat it. Let me see, did some of my rhinestones shift? No, they didn't. 
So again, when you're doing rhinestones on um, a hard surface like this, I've noticed when I've done decals or my cup wraps, even my uh, Cricut Maker with the rhinestones there, um, I've noticed that when I use the clamshell to press the rhinestones, because they are coming in at an angle, they do tend to shift. So if you have a heat press or even the new Cricut press, if you're coming from above, you have a less chance of your rhinestones shifting. But how pretty is that? Look at that. So that's a nice piece of artwork. Um, I made one of these for my nieces and she's moving to uh, New York for a new job. It does have the scatter uh, design, so that's why they look a little more scarce as it goes to the bottom. Um, but that's how you do uh, rhinestone artwork on a canvas board. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.